Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here and welcome to another episode of my AC Milan Let's Play and AC Milan story as well. Uh, being a story and a Let's Play together, I'm co really combining like as a Let's Play, like a walkthrough. Well, Football Manager, you don't really have walkthroughs, but basically playing through a season, that's pretty much, or as many season as I want, but also a story um, in the story sense where I give a lot of information and hopefully I can mix those two together. And, you know, I said, uh, previous episode, I said I'm probably not going to be doing any, any, like, any other, like, series, but I'm also going to go back to my Southampton uh, career mode in FIFA, and I really just want to uh, do do well, because I know, obviously, I would have FIFA subscribers uh, still, obviously, I would have people who subscribe for FIFA, so I still want to put that content out there, not, cr like, completely abandon it for the rest of, like, the next couple months, so I still want to do some, so I'll probably start that. Uh, from tomorrow, I've got a couple episodes ready to do some commentary over. I've got two right now, so um, be prepared for that. If anyone was wondering about that, I've been away, obviously, uh, getting a new computer, so I'm getting back into it. Uh, so yeah, I just want to talk about that a little bit before, uh, because I'm sure people will be wondering, and I like to update people who's uh, wondering about different videos and that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I said I probably need some centre backs, and I did sign it. I tried to sign Diego Elori. Uh, but the negotiating is still going. They uh, clearly don't want to let him go, and obviously because he's a good defender. But then this other guy, Alessio Romanoli, or Romanoli, uh, from Navarra, who's in Serie B, I believe. Yeah, if you go to... Yeah. Actually, he was at Roma, uh, so he obviously was a youth product from Roma, so he probably does have that good potential. Um, obviously, Ro Roma, they usually do produce very good talent, so... Uh, he's one of those, and now he's going out and getting his own ex experience. So I just got to make sure he's not on loan, is he? Yeah, he's not. Or oh, he is on loan. Uh, he's from Roma. I thought he was just at Novara. Uh, because in this new skin I use, at least on profile, it doesn't show they're on loan. It just shows, yeah, the team they're at. But yeah, it doesn't really matter for that. I'm still going to try and get him. And hopefully I do. I've got two options I'm trying to get right now. Uh, he's definitely one of them. And also there's another one I'm getting a scout report on. Uh, I forgot his name right now. Uh, but you'll see it maybe if I simulate through after the match. But for now, uh, we're playing our second, yeah, the second level of the Dynamo Kiev match. Obviously, we won 2-0 in the first one. I'm just going to go straight with the tactic I'm using. I suppose some people say you should try and go defensive. Uh, but in my tactic, we like to keep a lot of possession. And if the way I see it, the more we have the, the ball, uh, the opponent doesn't have the ball, and that will give them less chance to score. Uh, just one change I've made. I changed the closing down from standoff to pressing. Pressing, I should say, because uh, pressing obviously uh, is more suited uh, to an offside gameplay, so or offside philosophy. So, um, well, at least just playing offside. That's what I meant to say. And attacking philosophy as well. Uh, like standing off doesn't really suit well with that, but I'm still going to keep zonal marking because it seems to be working well so far. I've have I've haven't conceded a goal in our last or our first two professional matches or. Uh, yeah, professional matches, uh, professional or uh, competitive, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, and I already set up the team before I really, before I started making the video, so I didn't have to get into it, but then suddenly Zaccardo uh, has the low fitness, so I'm going to have to look for a replacement, Antonini, yeah, Antonini uh, pronouncing his name weird there, but anyway, he's going to go on the right side, that's like, uh, like I said, I like players who can play both uh, wing backs, because then I can rotate them, uh, the first match, Antonini, he played in the left wing back and now he's coming in the right wing back. So um, hopefully can play well, at least until Ignacio Abate comes back. And Desquilio, he really needed uh, he needed a well... He duly deserved rest as well. He played fantastic in the first couple of matches, but now uh, he definitely needs a rest. But I'll take Zicardo off. Uh, Mech says he can't really play. Um, yeah, I'll leave Zicardo there because uh, clearly he's a good player. And he did well. He got a 7.1 rating in the first match he played. Uh, if you see, he played some off the bench, so his conditioning isn't amazing, so he's definitely, uh, he needs those extra matches, so I'll just leave him on the bench, and if we're winning, I'll give him a nice, like, if we score a couple early goals, maybe I'll just bring him on half-time because of that fact. And, yeah, that's enough for now. you got De Jong, obviously, he's the anchor man. In between him and Fernando, they're going to rotate in between that position, and also constant, like I said, uh, because I need to rotate in that position because, obviously, we have other players in that position that aren't fit right now or not have a good condition that played the previous match, uh, like with Decilio and that kind of thing. But the thing is right here, he has runs ball, he runs with the ball through the center and we want him to play on the left side. So that maybe is a problem. And he has like preferred moves for a center mid. So uh, yeah, that's the problem for people wanting me to play him 
at left back or left wing back in the case of my tactic. Uh, but I'll move into the match. I want to try and spend less time on my tactic now and actually get into the matches and, yeah, try and do heaps of matches. I'm not sure if I'll do two in this episode. It might be a bit too long. But, yeah, I'll just do one. Um, it really depends how quick I get through it. And I don't want it too like 30 minutes was the last episode. I know even someone said it was... <laughs> or they want longer episodes than that. I'm not really sure if I can do that. Well, I could. It just takes longer to render and upload. So, um, I think I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to do any... Uh, things maybe I really want to I always want to to me the attacking when they play this kind of formation uh, the attacking at the AMC I definitely like to tight mark him and show him to the weaker foot at least that worked last time so I'll just go with that again and yeah hope that does well and if we can just mirror the previous performance but we are playing away so it might be a different task uh, assertive and I'll just tell them we're expecting to win and we didn't get any reaction, but that's definitely something we are expecting to win against Dynamo Kiev. So that's what I'm going to go out and say, obviously. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, we should do well. Uh, you can see on aggregate, we're winning 2-0. And we're playing away here. So we still have to be a bit careful that we don't concede. But like I said, this formation is controlling. And we should control the possession. And that's what I'll be looking to do. And as I said before, the more we have the ball, the opponent doesn't. And obviously they can't score if they don't have the ball. But I still, I want to see my players, I want to have a really convincing game. Like I don't want to just uh, scrape a, like a nil-nil here. I want to have another good performance by my players. So uh, we'll see what we can do here if we can win the ball back. And oh, constant, nice sliding tackle there. He's definitely showing he can be good defensively. Just got to work on that passing. Niang making intercepted. Oh, he almost scored early there. Uh, in the f second minute right there. So that was a bit unlucky. It would have been his third goal in European competition already. Okay, this... I need to change this back. I need to... Uh, sometimes this has a, like a mind of its own. i just got to change it back to the uh, body language and performance. You can see some uh, different performance indicators right there. Vergara, he's back. Or Vergara, he's back in that uh, ball-playing defender. And yeah, he does really good in that role. He can get up and yeah, we really have our center backs attacking. So they come into midfield and some play some good passes and that's how we dominate the game. I know we're going to concede. It's almost very similar to a Barca formation, uh, just in different positions. But look at that strike by Stefan al Sharari. Finally, first couple games, uh, he wasn't really convincing for me. He had a couple chances like that and he missed, but I'm really happy. Eventually, uh, he decided just to put his shooting boots on and he finished that dribbling pass uh, easily past the defense there, then just blasted it through. A goalkeeper could not save that, but here Harmash has a free kick. Got to save this. No, it wasn't even on target, so he couldn't save it. Or oh, he just left it go. Uh, so yeah, you think we should win here. As you can see, you'll be able to see some, like the passing accuracy. That's really my main uh, main thing I want to see, especially with this kind of formation. And as I said, it's very similar to Barcelona. Um, obviously, in different, the players are placed differently, but really the philosophy behind it is very similar, like a pass. Um, or a fast, short passing game, and that's uh, I'll be looking to play that way because uh, it's very good to watch. Anyway, at least I would imagine it will be good to watch, and hopefully uh, people enjoy watching it. Like the short, that's uh, I like to play. And uh, not really. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. I just yeah, I really like this kind of formation when you a lot of passing, short passing. Not really. I don't obviously I don't do long balls. Long balls like Stoke City. That's something I didn't want to do. I wanted to introduce this, like this really new style of play. I suppose uh, they AC Milan play a 4-3-3, but it's definitely uh, more advanced. As you see, Niang taking a shot there, but was never really going to trouble the keeper. And yeah, as I said, I just want to bring a new philosophy uh, to AC Milan, some, a really advanced tactic. And uh, you definitely need good players, as you can see. When you play with wing backs and only two centre backs, you definitely really need a... Uh, the tactic needs to... Uh, it needs to be good in all areas. The center mids need to be able to defend and going forward as well. But yeah, the center mids are very crucial to get back uh, because they're the next defensive players. Of course, playing with wing backs, sometimes wing backs they're up and you got the center backs have to come back. And of course, the anchor man uh, De Jong really watch him closely because he makes some good interceptions and gets a very uh, he gets back into the defense there. They made a good ball for Ruben, but Abiati he's actually been fantastic. And again. Uh, constant. Okay, some some people said I should have played him, and he's really he's got two good slide tackles already, and he's done that. He's just cleared the ball very well, and maybe I should play him, uh, even though he does have the ten passing. That's just maybe I should really work on that. Uh, but who else do we have? We've got Antonini and Decilio, who else were playing in those positions. So uh, obviously, but he's natural, or he's natural as a left back. So it's he'll be close to natural as a wing back. It's, it's sort of the same role. It's just more attacking, pretty much. And yeah, I just want his passing. And I'm really, I'm confused about that. He used to play, 
I'm sure he can play, because like, in his positions, he can play center mid as well. I thought his passing would be more than 10. So, uh, But I, I have to be honest, I've never really watched him play too much uh, before he played for AC Milan. So, And he obviously just joined uh, last season. So it was hard for me like to see him heaps. And obviously he went to left back. Maybe that's why his passing attribute was decreased. I'm not really sure. But here they're going to have a chance. And they score Yarmolenko. But we still got the away goal, so getting that away goal was very crucial. And not to forget, we're still two goals in the lead, so we, I'm not really too worried. Like playing uh, them being at home, I always thought they were going to score, especially with our playing a very very attacking formation, and we're always going to score a bit. Uh, <laughs> I thought there was going to be a penalty. Uh, that's why I was not sure what to say. But hopefully, just a yellow card or less for Ricardo Montalivo. A red card would be a disaster here. He's just worn by the referee. Okay, that's all right. And hope, we've been very good from defending from set pieces in the first couple games. And Montalivo, just the one man in the wall there, he stops it. So that was actually a really poor set piece by them. Uh, Al Sharari really becoming comfortable in this formation now, running at the defense. And yeah, they can't really deal with his pace right now. As Montalivo has a long shot, but Covell, uh, he's a okay keeper. And really, he wasn't going to let that go. Uh, as you can see right here, Al Sharari uh, playing well over 7 rating. Constant as well, he's doing well. Maybe I should keep playing at the left back or the left wing back. Just leave your comments, even though he does have that 10 passing. That's something that worries me if he like gives it away in defense. And especially playing very attacking, he could give it away. I'm just going to tell them to not uh, get complacent and yeah, tell them to keep focus as well. Uh, Zapata looking stressed, but a lot of other players are looking motivated or seeming... Uh, to gain focus, so that's ideally what I wanted, so just that one bad result doesn't really matter, but I suppose it's a centre-back, so that could prove very uh, disastrous if he makes a mistake in defence or something like that, so, but I'm really, I don't think we're going to lose this match, just like the match as a whole, I definitely want to win this actual match, not just on aggregate, just the actual match as well, uh, but yeah, uh, we did well to win the free kick there to make sure they didn't have a chance to score a goal, uh, one player is playing bad with a 5.9 rating, but hopefully they can turn it around. Hamash in midfield, you know, uh, we got him in my Arsenal Let's Play, uh, which was very good, but Abiati. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a disaster, isn't it? I'm going to have to make a change. Uh, I uh, Some people said I should just keep going with my attacking tactic, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be working the way I want it right now. Kevin Prince Boateng not playing well. We're going to have to bring in uh, Notorino and bring him in the deep line playmaker role. But like I said, we still have that away goal, so that's the advantage we have if they score another. So who else can we bring on? Zicardo to make it a bit more defensive. He's a bit more defensive than Antonini. And we have one more option to change. Uh, we've got Bal I'm going to bring Balotelli on. Just I just want to, to increase that attacking force and take off Niang. Uh, I suppose maybe he was on a high after scoring those two goals. And maybe he just needs to be bring back down to earth. And maybe he's just a bit too confident uh, for a young player. And you can't expect a 17-year-old to score, uh, really score consistently right now. So we're going to make those changes. And hopefully it does make a difference uh, in the match. So you see the long ball there. And Abiati. Maybe that is just a sign of him getting older. And he's getting prone to making some vital errors. Uh, but... I don't know, maybe that's just the game, like, letting them come in, and, yeah, but all in all, he shouldn't be making those mistakes for an experienced goalkeeper, uh, so, yeah, I was very disappointed with that, but, yeah, hopefully we can just go on the attack and score another goal, because that's the reason I bring on Balotelli, you suppose I could have done another, oh, Rubinho, he's on, I just need the dribble pass here, uh, Rubinho, he's going back to his old tricks, you know, in the last episode, in the last game, he did well to score a goal, but that's the thing with... Uh, Rubinho, uh, he's very unpredictable. Some games he can be just absolutely fantastic, and other games uh, he can just waste chances like that. He just tries uh, something he's not really capable of, and that's long shots. He's not really a good long shot taker. Uh, so, yeah, that's something we have to be careful of with Rubinho. Uh, Al Sharari, again, another wasted chance, and they've got the ball now. So, uh, if they get another goal, uh, that's something I'm going to have to. Uh, I'll be definitely worried there. I'm still not worried. <laughs> Uh, just because we do have that away goal. Like, if we didn't get that away goal, I'll be very nervous, obviously, uh, because then it will be a draw right there. It will be 2-0, uh, like we got... But obviously, you would want... Or not you would want it, but it will be interesting in terms of, a, um, like, viewing for people who watch my videos, maybe a penalty shootout or something, but that's not going to happen. Balotelli, I know I bring him on for a reason, uh, but he kind of wasted that chance there and was straight up Caval... And, yeah, I don't know. We're creating a lot of chances, but again, like I said, we still really need to get fluid 
uh, with this kind of, uh, with this tactic, it's still not 100%. And when it does, okay, it looks like we're going to win here because they need to score two goals, don't they? Because we have that way a goal. Yeah, we have that away goal, so they need to score twice from here. Uh, so I think, see, we're forced in playing that long ball. That's not really what I want to do, but they are pressuring us well. So uh, that's just credit to them. And they put the ball in here and they score. It's 3-3, but luckily, like I said, we have that away goal. Again, I'm not going to change my tactic because this tactic I have, it's based on possession. So hopefully we'll be able to just hold on to the ball for the rest of the match. But who knows, there may be a scripted 90-minute goal like in FIFA. Oh, of course, it's a set piece. <laughs> oh, I'm... Oh. Yeah, I had not doo doo. What is gonna? What is doo doo gonna do doo? Ah, oh, uh, this is really scary right now. De Jong, hopefully he can just defend it, just clear the ball. Hopefully, and it's offside. We should be able to hold on to the result here, but there's still a couple minutes of injury time yet to play. Abiati, you can see they're really pressing high right now, and Izicardo, just keep the ball. Yep, hopefully he can just hold on to the ball here, keep possession. That's what this tactic is based around, obviously. And Noshirino, Al Sharari, try and run to the corner and yeah, win a corner. That's fantastic. Hopefully, we can score here to yeah. But I'm really not. I'm not happy with this result here. But it really shows I might need another formation when playing away. Uh, but yeah, I, I just want to like Barcelona. They never change formation when they play away. That's that's why that's the thing. This is just a clear. Uh, this is just a clear point that it's not really the players aren't. We have some players that aren't good. Like I said, constant. He's 10 passing is clearly a hindrance in this kind of formation. That's why I didn't play him previously. But Balotelli, uh, Montalivo is on the ground. I'm not sure if he's just faking it to waste time or something, but we should get the win here. Just uh, like 10 seconds left, and we should hold on to it. And hopefully the whistle blows when it should blow and not have some... Uh, the time should... It should be finished now. It's uh, Three minutes is gone. It should be over right now. It should be over. It's uh, over 30 seconds past... <laughs> I'm just waiting to see for uh, the commentary down the bottom to see if they said it's over. They're changing to 4-2-4. That is the worst formation to play against in Football Manager at the end. They always score. And look at the time now. It's more than a minute past. It should be over right now. Montalivo. It's more than a minute past. The ref has to blow his whistle, surely. Has to be over. Caval clears it. De Jong, win. Surely it has to be over right now. Al Sharari, Nontorino. We're still going a minute and 30 seconds past the actual allowed time. If they score here, uh, I'm going to have some big complaints uh, later. Uh, but surely now it's over. Oh, basically two minutes over time. If I conceded, now, I, uh, conceded then, I would not be happy with the referee. But somehow, uh, yeah, somehow we won that assertive. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not happy with that performance. It's definitely not good enough. And we're very, very lucky uh, that we got away just winning on aggregates. Uh, you see here, uh, yeah, very lucky. Uh, we just won on away goals, and that's definitely not good enough. In we're going to play against better teams away, and yeah, we definitely need. But the Al Sharari goal was important early, so uh, I was very happy that Stefan uh, he finished for us, and that proved the important goal in the end. So I've got to be very happy with that. And again, like I said before, I play this match. I just want to check out all this stuff, and yeah, we're very lucky to escape there, and. Just winning on away goals. Constant. Uh, he's making the AC Milan debut. Obviously, uh, he did in real life. Flamini trying to sell. Marquinhos, he's another one. I'm tr another centre-back I have my eyes on. Rugani, another one. Uh, Capuano, he's a one from Pescara. So he's probably more a realistic option to sign. If I go check out the view of the port here uh, from Pescara, he's more realistic to sign uh, because he's in. He's playing in Serie B right now uh, for Pescara, I believe. Yeah, so he's a more realistic option, but I wanna, uh, I would ideally want to sign him at the end of the transfer window because I want to. This is what I would do for a younger player. I'll go to the end of, or at least a younger player who's playing already. If they're not playing, I just might as well get him straight away. I do the transfer at the end of the season, uh, so I can, so we can get that experience and hopefully improve more than come next season to our team. Uh, so I'll probably offer two point five million, and we'll see if that gets accepted. And if that does, I'll cancel my offers for the other players. Uh, so yeah. I'll leave that that for now. <laughs> that was a really... Uh, that match was... Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about it. We lost 3-1. And if that was like a league match or just a normal match in the group stages of the Champions League, that's definitely not good enough. I'll show you my other formation that I could potentially rotate to. 
and that is a 4-2-3-1. It's, I suppose, a lot of the similar formation or similar positions, I should say, about fullbacks in this one. We play with a defensive mid, a center mid, and then three attacking mids. We still have those inside forwards, but then advanced playca- playmaker as the AMC, and then obviously the striker. And yeah, but the only difference pretty much, it's more of a slower build-up. It's slow build-up and still short passing though, So and man marking instead. So uh, yeah, leave your comments if you think I should use this in away matches, or at least give it a chance to see how it goes. I haven't really used it yet, so I'm not sure if it's a good tactic or not. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, leave your comments on everything that happened in this episode, and I'll see you guys next time for some more double uploads.